So, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Haralambos, or maybe Bobby's from uh, Nubifkus, and uh, today uh, we'll give you a short presentation about uh, our project on uh, uh, providing a serverless framework for unikernels, based on unikernels. So, at first, a small introduction about uh, serverless computing. Uh, as you may already know, it's uh, an event-driven execution model, which is uh, allows uh, microservices bundled in containers uh, uh, to, uh, to deploy in a stateless, uh, uh, as stateless functions, uh, either on the cloud, either on the edge. And as we so, and as I said, like uh, most uh, of the microservices are bundled in uh, containers. Uh, which uh, allow the easiest uh, uh, management of uh, the whole, uh, uh, the orchestration of uh, the workloads, and um, uh, they also solve. Uh, uh, and mo we also know that uh, containers also uh, solve the problem of uh, software uh, delivery. Uh, it's uh, very easy to manage, and uh, they they are able to do that without uh, providing, uh, without uh, creating uh, any uh, more. Uh, performance overhead or memory or um, more memory management or memory uh, footprint uh, but as we know uh, containers are based on uh, operating system uh, level virtualization and this means that uh, uh, the workloads uh, all the workloads all the containers share the same uh, kernel and this is a, a very important issue especially for isolation and uh, in order to provide a solution for that uh, issue, uh, what happens now is that uh, uh, we usually deploy the containers inside the uh, virtual machines. And this creates uh, some uh, side effects because as we know, VMs do not have the same uh, instantiation time as uh, containers and uh, they increase uh, the footprint of uh, the workload. So uh, we see the emergence of uh, lightweight uh, virtual machines and lightweight uh, virtual machines monitors uh, like uh, Chemo Micro VM or Firecracker uh, in order to uh, provide a solution to uh, create uh, uh, a sandbox uh, uh, ex execution environment for containers without uh, uh, minimizing the boot times and the memory footprint. So our goal is to uh, build a serverless uh, framework uh, for the cloud and uh, the edge, and uh, we base our solution on uh, unikernels. Uh, so, uh, the uh, so the goal to do that is, what we want to do with that is to minimize the instantiation time, uh, and uh, we do that uh, with a very lightweight uh, hypervisor that we built. Uh, we minimize the attack service using uh, the unikernel uh, functions, uh, we, we bundling the functions inside unikernels, and uh, we provide uh, uh, an orchestration uh, uh, compatibility with uh, pop existing popular uh, container uh, runtimes. So at first, uh, how, how should the uh, lightweight hypervisor look uh, for in the case of uh, serverless? And uh, the key points uh, for such a hypervisor is to provide as possible, as, as fast as possible, cold boot times uh, it has to provide strong isolation, uh, for example, using uh, hardware extensions as KVM does. We, um, an idea could also be to minimize the mode switches uh, uh, when we have VM exits uh, so we can have faster I.O. Uh, input and output and uh, uh, also we can also minimize the ABI in order to strengthen and provide a smaller uh, attack surface. And uh, uh, all of that has to be uh, also uh, suitable for uh, edge devices uh, that uh, are also coming uh, uh, in surface uh, this uh, uh, time. So for, let's take uh, as an example uh, a generic uh, virtual machine uh, uh, I.O. Uh, request, for example, a network packet. A ne network, uh, packet. So we have the application that makes uh, the network uh, request. Uh, we have um, uh, the, 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 pack, uh, the packet, as we know, we will travel from the application to the kernel space inside the guest, then the kernel from the network stack, then the kernel uh, then will trap. Uh, this will create a VM exit, which will, be, uh, which will make uh, the KVM to wake up and uh, manage, uh, to manage uh, this uh, trap. The KVM doesn't know what to do with uh, this uh, uh, trap and it will uh, give the control to the virtual machine monitor. 
uh, which will therefore uh, forward the packets to the I guess, to the kernel again in order to uh, send uh, the network uh, request. So we propose heads, which is a hypervisor for the heads, and uh, uh, our main uh, what we usually what we mainly do is that uh, we try to minimize the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the mode switch between uh, in, in, in the host between the kernel and the user space. So instead of uh, the packets travel from the guest to the host, uh, then from the host to the user space and back to the kernel space, we uh, simply uh, move the virtual machine monitor inside the kernel. And of course, uh, we have to do that uh, in a very minimal way in order to keep it as simple as possible and as small as possible. So, uh, uh, so in order to do that, we also use uh, unikernels as guests, uh, which um, uh, are able to uh, provide uh, stronger uh, isolation. Uh, so, in case you are not familiar with uh, unikernels, unikernels are uh, specialized uh, single address space uh, images, uh, which are simply constructed uh, using uh, library operating systems. A library operating system is uh, a, a type of, op of architecture of operating systems that uh, uh, libify every component of, uh, uh, of uh, any operating system. For example, a driver, a user space, the user space management, all and all of these things. So what happens in the unikernels is that uh, the application is uh, linked against these uh, libraries and it forms an image that consists only with uh, the application code, its configuration, uh, any runtime that it might, it might need it from the application, uh, uh, any library, and of course the operating system components uh, that glue all these things uh, together. So, uh, with uh, that design, unikernels are able to, to, perf to have a very, very small memory footprint. Uh, they can achieve very, very fast boot times, um, even uh, the same as uh, containers or even faster, and uh, uh, they can provide uh, strong security in two uh, levels. At first, they benefit from the isolation that is provided from the hypervisor, and uh, secondly, they have a very, very minimal attack surface, uh, that, uh, a minimal uh, attack service. On the other hand, uh, as you might already know, uh, ex uh, Unikernos provided a completely different execution environment, which makes porting existing application and libraries very difficult uh, and also, there is no support for hardware acceleration, and um, uh, most of uh, and uh, it is very difficult. And since they are not containers uh, or uh, light, very very lightweight VMs with only one function, they also create some challenges uh, regarding uh, their orchestra orchestration. So, in the case of uh, hardware acceleration, the challenging thing is that uh, the existing uh, frameworks are. Uh, very very big and uh, it's not easy to port them and uh, also it's uh, also dif and it's very difficult to access any hardware acceleration devices like GPUs and FPTAs which require for example a, a driver to be ported inside the uh, unikernel. So what we do is that uh, we decouple the function called from uh, its hardware specific uh, implementation with uh, VXL and uh, VXL uh, as you might have seen yesterday is uh, a a simple uh, library that consists of a static uh, and uh, a static or user-defined API that interacts with the application. Um, a, a glue code, uh, a, any, uh, the plugins that we see, for example, here on the bottom, uh, that uh, it's uh, just the glue code for the hardware implementation and uh, the main component, which is the VXLRT, uh, which is a, m a multiplexer for the requests that come from the application and they are mapped to the uh, respective uh, hardware implementation. So it's more like a VM remote uh, execution uh, API. Um, so in the case of um, uh, the uh, in the case of uh, orchestration, um, as we know, most of uh, the frameworks that uh, already exist are tailored for containers. Uh, and uh, what we need to do is to integrate the unikernels in that kind of, uh, in that uh, uh, model. So we bundle the unikernel binary with all the, its uh, dependencies in a container image, and uh, later we unbundle the, uh, the the unikernel binary, and then we spawn it uh, from the uh, container image. Uh, 
we also build uh, from scratch URAN-C, which is uh, a kata container uh, based uh, runtime, which is uh, uh, able to spawn uh, unikernels. And uh, at last, we also need uh, the uh, interface that will interact with uh, the serverless uh, gateway in order to, evo to invoke uh, uh, or get any metrics uh, from the function. And uh, for example, as you might, uh, if, anyone, if any of you is familiar with OpenFast, there is a function called Watchdog. And what we do is that uh, we port this uh, functionality inside the unikernels and uh, uh, this uh, uh, snippet will then call uh, the function that is uh, bundled inside the unikernel. Uh, in this diagram, we see what we want to achieve. Uh, we want to have, uh, we want to allow the user to have uh, the option to deploy uh, their functions either in uh, uh, as a simple container, as a sandbox container, or even as a unikernel from a unified framework, uh, uh, from a uni uh, uh, unified uh, uh, framework like uh, Kata containers and, uh, using uh, Kubernetes. So to sum up, uh, we built uh, a lightweight uh, serverless uh, framework and we base it on uh, unikernels, uh, stripping down the virtual machine monitor and moving it inside the Linux uh, kernel. Uh, we use unikernels to bundle the functions that uh, the user wants to deploy. Uh, we provide hardware acceleration. It's, uh, as far as we know, uh, there is no other uh, hardware acceleration support for unikernels right now. And uh, we also enable uh, uh, the deployment uh, of uh, unikernels uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the edge. Uh, both our projects, uh, heads and uh, URANC, which are the main components, are work in progress. Uh, VXL is more stable and you can uh, easily uh, try it out uh, whenever you want. So I also need to um, say that uh, this uh, project is uh, partially funded from uh, Serrano and uh, 5G. Uh, complete uh, with our Horizon 2020 projects. Uh, thank you for your time, and uh, we will be very happy to answer any questions you might have. How stripped down Linux kernel? As far as you'd like, but it's still Linux, right? Same memory management and so on. Uh, you, do you still have uh, the separation of user space and kernel space in that? Well, you could do a no MM Linux okay. kernel. So, so yeah, let's say you do a no MM. That would be a nice mini kernel if you can make it, actually. This is an open uh, issue right now, like uh, how we can have Linux compatibility uh, in unikernels, for example. And it would be, I think uh, there are some kind of projects that uh, they're trying to uh, achieve that. And if you do have user space, kernel space separation? Uh, then uh, it's more like uh, just as, uh, let's say, a bit of more overhead because of uh, the mode switch between user space and kernel space, which is, is it really necessary if you just have only one application? Do you really need that? That's uh, the notion. Yes, uh, there have been uh, quite a lot of uh, papers that, uh, for example, um, Unicraft and uh, 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 solo five also, like RAMPRAN, Unicraft, OSV, these are the most popular, let's say, frameworks for unikernels. And they are able to achieve much faster uh, network I.O. and uh, much faster uh, boot times uh, compared to uh, containers, instantiation time. I, I don't have any numbers right now, but uh, I can uh, point you to these uh, papers if you want.
hard drive sales. Sorry? Yes, but uh, we, that would be an option. But uh, if we have uh, pass through, then we uh, limit uh, how many guests we can have, right? Like uh, we cannot share the same resources easily with pass through. That's also a case. But you Yes, exactly. Thank you again for your time.